Welcome to the Garden Webinar. I am Jennifer Mullins and this is Matthew Jokes. We are colleagues at the Miracle Clubhouse and we are very excited to be here today and share our gardening tips with you. Remember, these are just some of the tips we have learned and we, are, we have various levels of experience in gardening, so always do your research. Together, here at the Miracle Clubhouse, we've planted lots of different fruits and vegetables over the years. We found that some of the ones that we've done most consistently are tomatoes, cucumbers, and peppers. First, we will discuss the tomato. The most common types of tomato we use at Miracle Clubhouse are the beefsteak, the brush red pride, the black creme, and the tumbler hybrid tomato. It is good to know that there are two types of tomato growth habits. One is determinate. The determinate variety can grow to a certain height. It's already determined, usually two to three feet tall, and a set number of fruit. And then concentrate on ripening that number of fruits. The indeterminate varieties keep growing taller and taller and setting and ripening fruit until they are killed by the frost. I've seen some pretty awesome tall tomatoes my friends did. They were almost 10 or 12 feet tall with some serious staking. You can really have some spectacular plants. Some of you might be asking, what do you need to begin with tomatoes? Well, tomatoes have three main requirements, sun, water, and well-drained rich soil. The more sun you get on your plants, the larger your yield. The next you need to know, you need at least about seven hours in June sunlight to have decent plants and 12 hours for beautiful plants with lots of tomatoes around July. Also about preparing tomatoes. Soil, we need to have well-drained soil, whether you're in a container garden or in your ground garden. If you're planting outdoor garden, it's never hurts to condition the soil with sand and compost. Thanks, Matthew. Did you know that propagation is the process of breeding a plant from its natural stock? We like to start our seeds indoors seven to eight weeks before temperatures reach 62. And we are like probably two weeks away from that happening. And above all, you just want to make sure that you, the danger of frost has passed. In the Dayton area, we aim for planting outside after Mother's Day. That's the typical day, right? Exactly. May 15th was what our 5B zone used to be. If you go by the new 6A zone, it's May 10th, but Mother's Day is always the safest bet. We start seeds in trays filled with seed starter, mix, or compost. We like to use the compost that we already have uh, in the garden, and that way when we plant the seeds, the seeds and the plants are already used to that compost, so it's not as much of a shock. Uh, seedlings need light for at least 12 to 14 hours a day, and right now we have lots of plants, as you can see, that we are growing to get ready to plant in our garden. Once the plants have reached the size of two inches, almost about these size, you'll, they'll start crowding each other in the trays, or when the roots start to emerge, we transfer them to these three and a half inch smaller pots. Mum pots work very well. So do 16 ounce plastic cups with holes uh, poked in the bottom of them. Plants will not become root bound when planted in these containers until they reach 12 to 14 inches in height. When you transplant, take care not to damage the roots. Make sure the mix that you're the receiving this roots is moist because seedling roots will almost immediately die once they're exposed to air or dry planting mix. This is a pepper plant, but you can see the roots are exposed here and they are not rooting. They're just waiting to go into the ground. Great info, 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 Matthew. You're welcome. <clears throat> After your starters are large enough and the weather is ready, <clears throat> we move the plants outside. Tomato seedlings can be planted deep enough that the soil is over the first set of the leaves. And this is your first set of leaves down at the bottom. Remove them by plucking. And remember, please don't tear them because once you tear them, you mess up the branch of the whole tomato plant. Take care to keep them sheltered from the wind. Make sure they don't spend more than 15 minutes in direct sunlight. Because the first day, these plants tend to sunburn. 
it's best to start in the shade for a day or two and then move them to partial shade so they can get used to the sun and full exposure. If the temp low temperature will remain above 52 degrees, you can leave them outside overnight. After a few days, you can leave them in a direct sunlight for an hour or so. Gradually move them to the direct sunlight and don't expose temperatures under 52 degrees, like you previously said. Once your garden or soil temperatures reach 62 and above, you can plant, provided you won't see more than a couple of nights under 40 degrees. So don't plant if you know and you're looking at your weather. If anything is under 40, do not put them out. If you plant too soon, the roots will get chilled and the plants will never fully recover and you will lose all those seedlings. After just here is a few more tips. Planting tomato seedlings, you want to plant them deep. You can pull off the bottom two leaves, as Jennifer said earlier, bury them up to the next set of leaves, and the roots will form in the portion of the plant that's in contact with more moist soil. Now, an often made mistake is that people rush their plants into the ground as early as possible. And you don't want to be that person. When you dig your hole, you want to make sure that the feel the soil does not feel cool to the touch. If you leave, if it does, leave the hole open for at least a week and allow the soil soil to warm sufficiently. If you have a thermometer, use it and check the soil temperature. Many people wonder how large their tomato plants should be when they're placed in the garden or a large container. 12 to 14 inches in height is ideal. You generally don't want the fruit to be forming on your plants, but flowers are fine. When you remove the plant from the pot, take care not to bend the stem and be gentle with the roots, making sure they're not tangled. Another option is using containers. Tomatoes do great in containers. In fact, I found that the 15 gallon above are great to use. Remember that the container soil is much warmer than the garden soil. So during during most of the season. So when it gets super hot outside, that's when you need to uh, water your your containers more with at least like an inch of water on top that you can see seep down into the container. This gives the <coughs> container gardens a distinct advantage during the early season, but can cause, like I said, the problems in July and August. So when they reach 80 and 90 degree, 90 degrees out, you really need to water more often. And this helps keep that soil temperature below 80 degrees. And don't forget about staking. Almost all tomatoes should be staked unless you can tie it to a hog panel or a railing. We've used these stakes and we've also used our hog panel to stake up against. So it gives it more uh, stability. I found that the vinyl coated stakes work well. So tomato cages, um, our tomatoes have grown so big that they just break out of the cages and that's why we've kind of gone to just the staking and the hog panel. You can let tomatoes grow along the ground, but beware that you will be fighting insects and rot and other rodents that might want to enjoy your tomatoes also. Do many of our viewers prune their vegetable plants? Well, when I was a kid, everyone said you had to prune or sucker the tomato plants. Suckers have been said to suck all the energy out of the plant. The only problem is, is that suckers also grow tomatoes. Exactly. So uh, Miracle Clubhouse's experience has shown that there's really no difference in production between prune plants and non-prune plants. Don't be a sucker. Don't have to trim your suckers. That's right. Thank you. Fertilization. Would you, uh, here at the Miracle Clubhouse, we don't use uh, artificial fertilizers. We have found that our yield is much better using natural fertilizers and natural compost on the plants being healthier. If you have trouble finding natural compost or some organic fertilizers, go to your local garden store. Watering each plant every three to five days, depending on rainfall. Tomato can generally, tomatoes can generally like about four to five inches of rainfall per month. So plants will start to wilt if they need water, but you don't want to wait till they're wilted, then it's harder for them to recover. Each inch of water in the container is exactly what is needed. You should be able to pour one inch above the soil before it soaks into the soil. 
also containers, however, require a lot more water than the in-ground plants. When daytime temperatures, as Jennifer mentioned, are in the high 80s, we tend to water our garden here every other day, but the containers have to be watered daily. You should always use cool water. Some rain barrels can practically boil the water if exposed to the sun for too long. Problems also, a common problem that many tomato growers have in our area is blossom end rot. You may have heard that this is caused by inconsistent watering. We have not found that to be the case as much, but more from a lack of calcium in the soil. This can easily be fixed. Just add crushed cooked eggshells around the plant at a rate of three to four eggshells per plant. Another excellent soil additive is crushed oyster shells. Also, if you're a tobacco user, smoker or chewer, it's important to wash your hands before handling your seeds and plants. You can infect your garden with tobacco mosaic virus, which affects the, both the tomatoes and peppers. Wow, that was some great info about tomatoes. Now let's talk about peppers. We generally grow banana, bell, jalapeno, cayenne, and habanero peppers at the Miracle Clubhouse. The hotter, the better. <laughs> Pepper plants have essentially the same needs as tomato plants, except they prefer a slightly different mix of sand and compost. Peppers don't need as much water as tomatoes and will wilt when in need of water, but try not to let that happen. If your soil mix is correct, it is difficult to overwater. Peppers face the same humidity temperature problems that tomatoes experience. So you will see flowers drop from the plant when pollination is unsuccessful. If you're planting different kinds of peppers, separate the seeds, especially when saving them after harvest. Cross pollination can yield some interesting results. And yes, we have learned by experience when our hot peppers were way too close to our sweet banana peppers and they became hot sweet banana peppers. So I also advise that you kind of plant them in different areas so they're not cross-pollinating. With everything, there can be some problems. The main problem with growing peppers is supporting the plant. You need a light, sandy soil to grow the mix well, but this type of soil provides little support for the root structure. Plants can tip over once the peppers form on the plant, if not well supported. Once a plant has tipped over, it will never be as strong of a producer. You have found, we have found that three five foot stakes driven two feet deep work best to support a large pepper plant. Try the Velcro ties as they seem to work very well. We showed the stake earlier. Once you also start to see some small peppers on the upper portions of the two or three branches, it's time to place stakes to support each of these branches going across the main stake. These new stakes can be six to 12 inches on either side of the main stake and tie the branches to the new stakes. So in the past here at Miracle Clubhouse, we've staked and we haven't used uh, staking. Uh, the peppers seem to stand very well on their own. So that's totally up to you. And let's not forget our favorite, cucumbers. The most common cucumbers grown at the Miracle Clubhouse are straight eights, the Space Master, and we have one here that is called where they go? the lemon cucumber. Go check them out. They're awesome. And mouse melons. Mouse melons are perennial. So remember, wherever you plant them, they will come back and they're vining. So you need to provide a trellis for the mouse melons. They're about this big and they, they look like a little melon, watermelon, but they taste like a really light cucumber taste. It tastes pretty good. I've had one. They're yeah. pretty good. They're fun to show uh, and get people to try them. Cucumbers have two different growth habits, the bush and the vine. The bush varieties are compact and do not require a trellis. They are ideal for growing in containers or small raised beds. In large gardens, vines are often left to grow on the ground, but this practice promotes disease. This would be a good example of a vining cucumber. What kind, of, what kind of cucumbers climb, Jennifer? Well, the cucumber, the space master bush variety is what we have right there. Okay. Um, a few of my favorites are also the homemade pickles, the sumter, and like I mentioned, the lemon and the market more cucumbers. We've used all of those at the clubhouse and they've done really well. 
I like these types too. Now, what about the site selection and soil? Well, although cucumbers do best in loose sandy loam soil, they can be grown in any well-drained soil. They'll grow anywhere. Cucumbers must be grown in full sunlight because their roots reach 36 to 48 inches deep. Do not plant them where tree roots will rob them of their water and nutrients. When seedlings emerge, begin to water frequently and increase to a gallon per week after the fruits begin to form. When seedlings reach four inches tall, then plant so that they are at least uh, one and a half feet apart. If you're if you're worth organic matter in the soil before planting, you may only need to side dress your plants with compost or well rotted manure. Uh, we use compost here. Manure gets a little messy and stinky. You can fertilize. You you can use fertilizer from your garden store, such as vegetable plant food, which is a low nitrant and high potassium and phosphorus formula. That's pretty interesting. Now, what would you say is the most important requirement for cucumbers? Water, 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 water. They need at least one inch of water per week or more if the temperatures are sky high. Inconsistent watering leads to bitter tasting fruit. And we have made that mistake when the, gosh, what was it, a couple years ago was the, the summer was just scorching and we weren't able to water as often. So lesson learned there. Water slowly in the morning or early afternoon. Do not do it in the heat of the day. Avoiding the leaves so that you don't encourage leaf disease and that can ruin your plant. So water at the root. Don't water from the top of the plant. You want to put the spigot down at the bottom, the faucet or the, what is it called? Uh, yeah, the nozzle, I can't the, think of it uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Put it down at the root so it doesn't splash up on your leaves, which, like I said, it causes a uh, disease. If possible, water your cucumbers with a soaker. That's the word I was looking for. Yeah. Hose or a drip irrigation to keep the foliage dry. Mulch is great to put around your pepper plants, your cucumbers, and your tomato plants because it holds in the moisture. Exactly. Space is so important. If you have limited space, you can go vertical. Set up trellises early to avoid damage to seedlings and vines. We use hog panel for trellising here at the Miracle Clubhouse because the squares are smaller on a hog panel, where on a cattle panel, they're a lot larger. So it's harder for the cucumbers to reach. Um, and our favorite is harvesting. It's the ultimate goal. Using a knife or clippers, cut them at the stem above the fruit. If you pull the fruit, it can damage the vine. Yeah. Once you break a vine, you damage the whole plant. Keep them picked because if you don't, as plants mature, they'll start producing. So do not let them turn what white yellowish color. A common question that new gardeners have is what plants pair well in the garden? Well, plants should not share space with tomatoes, including plants that should not share space with tomatoes include broccoli and cabbage. Corn is another no-no and tends to attract tomato fruit worm and the corn earworm. Planting tomatoes and potatoes increases the chance of potato blight disease. Plants that grow well with cucumbers include broccoli, cabbage, cauliflower, corn, lettuce, peas, beans, and radishes. Two plants to avoid when planting near cucumbers are melons and potatoes. Melons will take over your cucumbers. Sage is not recommended either, so keep them far away from your cucumbers. But the most popular pest control herb, the most popular pest control for cucumbers, believe it or not, is oregano. And also marigolds. Yeah. Marigolds sure. you should plant on the full outside perimeter of your garden. It helps a lot. It keeps a lot of pests out and uh, bugs. A lot of natural pesticides use kind of extracts of miracle of marigold, so that is very true. Right. And finally, peppers, carrots, cucumbers, and radishes, squash, and members of the onion family all do well growing near peppers. Eggplants thrive alongside peppers, and spinach, lettuce, and chard are also okay. Man, that all sounds good. I'm getting hungry. <laughs> well, Matthew, I think that covers all of our topics for today. 
Um, I always enjoy working with you at our clubhouse garden and all the members. Uh, without uh, the members of Miracle Clubhouse, we couldn't plant such a beautiful garden. Absolutely. Thanks for joining us today. And remember, these are our tips to grow in a garden. And we pulled the information from a variety of resources, including the Ohio Heirloom Seeds, uh, Burpee website, Stephen Fowler's Garden Center, and watch a wonderful lady on YouTube uh, called Roots and Refuge, and from the Mullins family traditions. I've learned from my grandparents and my parents, and I'm very thankful. And I learn every day from all the members that come in and share their memories of their family growing. And so we try and include everybody's ideas and um, stuff that's been passed down from generations into our garden. So it makes it a happy garden for all of us. I really think that this, the best part of growing a garden or any plants is the multi-generational pass down you can have, learning from your grandparents, passing it on to your kids. And then when you share, when you're talking in public with people and other people garden, you have something in common that you can talk about and it's very nice and fulfilling. So happy gardening and come see us again.